Comedy is dead. Comedy is dead. Comedy is dead. What's up, y'all? We have another edition of Comedy is Dead, episode six. Um, this one's probably gonna be a little disorganized because um, um, I've had a frazzled week. I don't. Need, I didn't even bring my stand. This, this, my phone is like sitting on top of like the tissue box and some other shit by the window. So great lighting, beautiful San Francisco. I mean, uh, uh, I opened for Frankie Quinones this weekend at the Cobb's Comedy Club here in San Francisco. That shit was hella fun. Um, Frankie has he has a wild ass audience. Um, and yeah, I had a, I had a great time with him. It was also like a different vibe because, um, I'm sure a lot of, you know, his show, this fool got canceled on Hulu this week. And, you know, so he kind of went in hoping to, you know, lift his own spirits. And, uh, you know, I was glad to be there and, and, um, you know, we were strategizing about the hashtag, hashtag save this fool. If you guys like this fool, please use the hashtag. Let's fucking get the momentum moving and use that hashtag as much as possible. Um, but yeah, it was cool because his fans are the shit. They're hella supportive. Um, shout out to everybody that went home and watched my special. That was cool. I got a lot of messages about that. I got a lady that gave me her earrings, these beautiful um, tribal earrings. And she gave them to me. She told me they gave me powers. And I was like, I fucking bet they do. I'm going to wear them. Um, yeah, his, his crowd is hella dope. But, um, yeah, we need to save this fool, guys. That's, like, the, the most important shit. It was really funny, too, because we were talking about the show. And he was like, yeah, the show is, like, you know, for Latino, Latino representation. And I was like, well, it's Mexican representation. I wouldn't say it's Latino representation. Like, let's be real here. But the thing is, it is a Latino show that's hella fucking funny. And that's why, I'm, you know, I've, I've, I've been campaigning for that show. You guys know I post about it all the time. I think it's a great show but i do think it's funny because people do conflate you know the one the one type of representation that's happening as all of the representation and that's just not true like hollywood only makes mexican shows or fucking boogie down bronx latinos as shows um right everybody knows hondurans know salvadorians know nicaraguans know bolivians know like they aren't making our shows um the difference is this show is actually fucking hilarious unlike some of the other shows that got, have gotten canceled i'm just like well it wasn't that good to begin with so i'm not gonna fucking ride hard for it but this one's hella funny there's hella great comedians on the on the writing staff and um if you haven't watched this full fucking watch it it's it's the first season is flawless that, that shit was so funny um just watch that sh that that episode i mean watch that season you know get the get the views up it's a it's a really really funny show made uh by comedians like there's hella comedians involved so it's it, that's why it's so good that's why i think abbott elementary is so funny too because they have so many fucking comedians in the writer's room and um, i think that shit is hella important but anyways i that was like the big thing this week is like you know staying online trying to use that hashtag getting that getting that momentum of that hashtag going you know it might not get renewed in the next six months but you know we've seen shows oh, what's that one show it's coming back in march uh on netflix girls five eva that shows a hilarious show i want to say it was on peacock streaming and i only had two seasons and of course they canceled it and then i guess netflix picked it up there must have been a campaign i i must have missed it but um it, it's also like that's 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 great it's also proof that it happens we've seen it with brooklyn 99 futurama there are hella shows that have gotten um, renewed after they got canceled they get picked up by somebody else so it's possible um uh frank's lady made her friend made all these like aprons pink aprons with the picture that said hashtag save this fool and it was cool because um we were like strategizing before uh, they went out there with these aprons like what to do because they were like going to protest outside type shit um, but I was like, dude, yeah, somebody outside, somebody on stage with the with the meet and greet, somebody in the, you know, in the in the in the venue, just like, you know, because these people want to take pictures and they did. And so it was like, we got to get this momentum going. Um, it was cool to help strategize trying to 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 save this fool. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that was like that's like the big thing this week for me. And and um, it was it was nice to be there with him this, next this weekend. Um and uh, oh and i do want to plug the email comedy is dead podcast at gmail.com i forgot to do it last week i don't always check it i'm gonna be honest i don't always check it um but i did check it and so 
that email is for questions. Like if you got questions about stand up or um, whether they're super vague or super specific, like hit me up. I don't always have the answers. Um, but yeah, submit them. But please don't submit networking shit. Like I don't want to network with anybody that's submitting to that email. Like you don't you don't have my personal email for a reason. And if you can't um, contact me through DMs, like bro, like don't please don't use my that email for fucking asking to to connect with me. I'm just gonna ignore it. Um, it's also just yeah, not that's not what it's for. Uh, so I don't have any questions uh, this week, but. Um, yeah, please submit some questions. I would I would love to answer some questions from everybody. So I'm keeping this one kind of short because um, I it was, yeah, I had a frazzled week. But um, a lot of shit happened in comedy this week, and yet nothing happened in comedy this week. You know, there's uh, some updates like Monique. I don't know if you guys saw. I guess her son responded to her interview, and then she responded with her husband to her son. And it's a lot of drama and then uh, Mike Epps with the club Shay Shay back and forth and they posted a picture and it's just so I think I had mentioned like one of the first scenes that embraced me when I first moved to Los Angeles was the black comedy scene they did they embraced me like a motherfucker it was really nice and I loved it black audiences are really hard to perform for so it was nice to be embraced by the bookers to to fucking smash a bunch of shows but part of the reason I don't really fuck with that scene is there's hella drama. There's hella fucking drama. There's always fucking drama. And um, it's wild to watch it unfold with like the big celebrity comedians because um, they are really showing what's really been going on. And I, I find it amusing it was also wild because Dion Cole had posted hilarious comedian if you don't know him you're kind of stupid because Dion Cole is so funny his last special I think it's on Netflix hilarious I got to tell him that which is nice because that shit was so funny I really enjoyed it um, I love when people actively choose to improve as an individual and then they show that on stage I love that shit and Dion was doing it and it was hilarious he's that last special is really really great I think it came out last year um, but anyways, he made this weird ass post where he, like a bunch of comedians were hanging out. I shared it on my Instagram stories, but it's like a big ass group of comedians. I forget why they were hanging out for somebody's birthday, but, um, it was like the most hella celebrity comedians. And he like did like a voiceover over the picture saying like, why is it that this group of comedians aren't bickering or they're not getting along or they're not talking shit about each other they're just showing each other love and it's like bro what it's like hella white comedians and it's like and they're all fucking famous way more famous than some of the minorities that are on there and, and most of the minorities on there where i seemed pretty relatively uh newer to success and if you're a minority that's relatively newer to success guess what you're not going to do is call people out on their bullshit uh, so uh, that goes back to what Tina Fey said when I was talking about last week, where it's like you fucking have to compromise a little bit um, if you want to if you want to be in those rooms. Um, so it was really funny him saying that because it's like, bro, what are you on? That's that's not. You think Mo Amer is comfortable standing next to Sarah Silverman right now? I don't think so. But whatever, you know, we all have our perspective on shit. Russell Peters had a really good clip that was shared um, from the JFL page, Just for Laughs uh, Comedy Festival. They shared a little interview snippet of him, and he was talking about how specials, stand-up specials aren't special anymore. And I really appreciated that clip because more people need to be talking about this. Um, a lot of people, a lot of young comedians, they think that they need to have a special. Like right now, they think, and you know, the visual media it's so important for the algorithm that everybody wants to do an hour long and then chop it up and then post it, right? But they also wanna like put, put it on YouTube, which is like cool in the sense that like, it's great that we have the ability, we have the resources to create our own uh, one hour specials because also we've seen some of these one hour specials, they're not fucking good at all. So um, it's kind of a double-edged sword with what he was talking about because he's basically like, Special should be special. Special should be something you work on for a long time and then you record it and then you release it. What's happening now is people are writing a new hour every year, recording it, putting it online. And it's just like, nah, man, you, 
come on, that's just not, you aren't uh, uh, making these specials. You're not putting work into these specials to make them what they're supposed to be. I mean, there's a reason Ali Wong's first special was like a huge like blockbuster groundbreaking hit because that material was shit she had been working on for years, okay? There was even some shit she snuck in there that was like old as fuck. Actually, that's it inspired me to do that for my special um, when I was preparing my half hour because uh, I remember being like, oh shit, Ali did a joke that's like 15 years old. Like I remember it from like early years of Ali Wong when she would uh, close the shows by saying, I'm AliWong.com branding. She was always good on that shit. But anyhow, um, and I did that for my special. There's like a joke, there was like two jokes that I was like, oh shit, this is like, I found it on my old, you know, hidden YouTube ass videos. And, uh, and I was like, oh yeah, that, this used to be one of my fucking bangers. And then you stop doing it. Cause you know, as you, 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 as you keep writing new material, you just kind of like, you know, some other shit, you're just not enthusiastic doing anymore. Um, but anyway, specials are supposed to be special. Um, and I mean, I think it's, it's a double-edged sword. Like I said, like, you know, the, the industry isn't rewarding necessarily the best comedians. And so like, I understand the desire to want to put out a special, um, when, when you are pretty new. Um, but I wish that more comedians were down to, um, make albums again. Um, cause that all the best have put out albums before they release specials. And, um, there is something wonderful about listening to some shit in your car or, you know, on the subway and you're listening it and you feel like you're there. You're not there, obviously. Um, and I, I do wish that was embraced more by the younger comedians. I, I really appreciate that there's some of my peers that started when I started that are starting to put out their first albums because that's the thing, you kind of hold out. You're like waiting for that special and then it doesn't happen. You're like, what do I do? And you don't want to self-fund it because what if you put it on YouTube and you get fucking 100 views? That's how I thought about this this uh, podcast. I was like, I'm only going to put it on YouTube. What if I only get 100 views? Like that is possible to happen. And um but the feedback has been so good that I don't care how many views I get. Like it's, it's been really nice. The feedback to this podcast, um, all the comedians reaching out, especially the women comedians reaching out to tell me that it's inspiring them and motivating them. I really appreciate that. Um, anyways, Bill Burr, I always tell this to people, Bill Burr's first one hour special. He did it at 40 years old. Okay. Just remember that that man had been working for years and years and years. I believe he had one or two albums out before he did the special. Um, or maybe he did one album in one half hour with Comedy Central, um, something like that. And I just, I just want to encourage. Oh, and and a lot of those comedians, like the big names, they usually put out once they've gotten to the point where they they have their big special. They usually put space out every two years or so. That's what Bill has done. So a lot of the greats do. Um, I think, I think George Carlin really fucked up this idea that you need to put out an hour every year, um, and then. Even him, it's like the specials later, they're not as strong, they're, they're a little redundant. So it's like, if you don't grow and you're just repeating the same shit over and over again, like, what are, what are you, how is that special? Anyways, I mean, I, you know, I'm not trying to disrespect his legacy. I just wish that more comedians, instead of just being, just listening to everyone telling them how great it is, I wish they would surround themselves with people that were like, well, why don't we go in this direction? Why don't we push this? I mean, again, that's why uh, certain comedians like having me open for them because I'll be I'll challenge some of their material and I'll also make suggestions and they love it because that's what they want. Comedians, we, we do want to put our best foot forward and sometimes people are so scared. Like you think uh, a random feature opening for Nicole Byer is going to have the, the guts to maybe give her a suggestion. It does. Maybe they've been doing it for 12 years. Maybe their suggestion is fucking great but they're so scared because she's so connected and they think like, oh, it's disrespectful and it's not, you know, not to even say all oh, you motherfuckers need to be giving headliners tips. Don't fucking do that either. You fucking stupid ass, stupid asses. Sometimes you guys misinterpret what I'm saying. I guarantee it because there's a lot of men listening to this. So I already know some of you guys are conflating some of the shit that I say. Anyhow, um, yeah, I, I, I guess this, this pod is about legacy Cause I was, I've been thinking about that. This is why I've been doing this podcast too. Cause it's like, I don't, I don't want to like, again, like with Kenny DeForest's death, I don't want to fucking die tomorrow. And then all my great knowledge, all my cool stories are gone. 
and I guess that's why it's so frustrating when a show like this fool gets canceled so early because you know they had you know they had so many different directions they could have gone with that show I, I and again like Seinfeld the first couple seasons are so not great they're good they're not great and they just were allowed to fucking thrive and grow and experiment and I was watching a documentary on HBO Max about the 90s and they specifically talked about how Seinfeld was like such a game changer because uh what was the episode the master of your domain how it um that was the episode that made everybody realize everybody was watching Seinfeld because they talked about it the next day because it was just so scandalous um and new for for that that era of television that's what's so frustrating about these shows they're like they're not getting a chance to grow and it's, it's just kind of heartbreaking um like i abbott elementary is going to grow they're, they've already read it for the fourth season that show's going to grow and grow and i'm so excited for that show and it's just so sad that so many so many great and fun stories are getting shelved because these motherfuckers just have no clue what to do with anybody any fucking ways um yeah i mean you know your your legacy is yours to leave behind and i i just wish people were taking taking a little more time we're, we're in such a adhd age an era with this algorithm and this like constantly this tiktok videos and i mean from vine to tiktok you know like our attention spans are fucked which is also why i'm keeping this short but um Anyways, yeah, I'm keeping this one a, a, a lot shorter than, than the past ones because it was kind of a slow week in comedy news. And it was also just like a, a like a unnecessarily messy week in comedy news. Like um, a, this a funny uh, young woman, uh, Erica Rhodes, she, she's she been doing comedy for a while. I've known her for a long time. And she got kicked off of her own show at Hyenas in Fort Worth, Texas. And I guess she like, there was no green room. I don't think, I don't know if I've been there. I, I must've never been there, but I guess she used the restroom. I mean, I'm sorry. She went to use the green room and there was no green room and that frustrated her. So she went on a walk and by the time she got back, they replaced her. She was a headliner and they replaced her. And so her fans were like, what happened? They told us that you had a, like an emergency. And she was like, what? No, I just really stepped outside for a little while and they booted her off the show and it just, this is what you're fucking dealing with. And um, and it's wild because bookers across the country are so... They're at the mercy of the algorithm right now. And and, and they're pretty open if you like question them about it and ask them about it. They'll, they'll, they'll talk about it because they're, they're trying to... You know, they're a business first, right? And um, so they got to make their money. So they got to book the people that are going to, you know, make them money. But the problem is, again, there's no nurturing happening in these venues. There's no like respect for the audience because uh people go to these venues they also like if they have a good enough experience they're going to come back to see a random show but if they don't have a good experience off the first time they go why why the fuck would they go back and it's just such a bummer that so many clubs are just they're not cultivating a great audience and teaching their audience how to be at their club because that's that's some of the best clubs they do that they teach you how to sit at their club that's why I liked Women Crush Wednesdays. I taught this audience how to consume comedy because people don't know. People don't know that they don't need to fucking be on edge. They don't know that they can just fucking show up and start laughing as soon as they get there. They don't need to like, you can trust that the show is going to be good. And that was what was cool about Women Crush. Like people would come again. I think I've talked about this before, but you know, one person's a headliner. They cancel and the audience doesn't care because they're like, nah, you put on a good show. That's how it should be. It's not how it is. And um, even had some people after Frankie shows that were like, man, this is the best show I've been to. Um, and it was because, you know, Frankie made sure to bring his lineup. And sometimes the lineups that um, they get booked together, they're not always the greatest combination of comedians. And people, headliners want to bring their openers, but the, the bookers don't trust these fucking headliners because, you know, they've only been doing comedy for a few years, but they got viral. So anyhow... We're in an interesting time in comedy. That's why I started this podcast. So, um, all right, all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what's up with content? Sorry, guys. I'm really tired. And, uh, I've, I've, I feel like this, this weekend really wore me out. This week really wore me out. 
Uh, again, we're going to keep it short, but this week in content, a lot of shit came out this week. Um, Taylor Tomlinson's new special came out. That shit was really good. I think this is definitely my favorite Taylor special. Um, she, her opening was so fucking ridiculous. It's so like Beyonce coded and I love it for her because it was her idea. Like I, it's so fucking ridiculous. You're just like, this is fucking low key disgusting. And then she addresses how wild it is. And you're like, all right, this bitch knows what's up. Um, and you know what I like about her special? The lack of long pauses. I'm so fucking tired of comedians doing long ass pauses after a joke because they have to tell their audience. That's what they're doing. They're telling their audience. This is where you laugh as opposed to writing a good enough joke that you don't have to tell them that they can just fucking laugh because the joke's actually really good. You caught it on my special. I did the same shit. I had to tell them to fucking stop applauding because I was like, who has the time for this shit? I need you guys to laugh and we need to get to the next joke. But I, I love the lack of long pauses. They're like good to use every now and again. They are. They're very helpful if like, you know, there's a joke that it's too punny and you know, these motherfuckers are a little slow about it. But um, I also just like love watching good women grow up. I feel like that's what's happening with Taylor. You know, she drops a little bombshell in there. It's dope. She's just growing up and it's nice to watch because, you know, I literally saw her as like, I don't want to say a little kid because she wasn't a little kid when, when we first met. But, you know, young comedians, when you see them and they're, you know, they're doing their clean material and you're just like, ooh, I wonder, I wonder what you're going to be like in 10 years. And like now it's, it's fucking cool to, to see her like, you know, be the adult version of herself. Um, and Nicole Byer had her crowd work special. That was that was entertaining for sure. I um, it's definitely for her crowd. I definitely had moments where I was like, "All right, all right, just fucking. We need to edit this down." I, I crowd work is so tricky, and it it everyone's doing it, which is I think it's cool. Everybody should be doing it. It's, it is a fun little hat trick to have, but um, I definitely feel like. It's, it's, well, and that's the other thing, right? She did it, in my opinion, it seems like she made it so she can chop it up and put it on her fucking TikTok and Instagram, which again is like, you kind of, we're all at the mercy of the fucking algorithm. And I guess, I guess like when I watch it, I, I'm thinking about all that shit and it just kind of bums me out that that's where we're at. Um, Martin Amini had his self-produced special on YouTube come out and it's again, cool to watch somebody have to, well, it's not cool to watch somebody have to fucking self-produce their own shit, but it was cool watching him self-produce his own shit and have those old bangers on there that you could tell he's tired of telling. Uh, I mean, I can tell. You, you guys can't tell. But it's like, man, these are they're great jokes. You know, he has some great jokes, old jokes on there, some great new jokes on there. And, um, you know, he's, he's also, like, been rewarded by the algorithm, and I think that's great. Um, Cause he's a hardworking comic. I mean, there's so many hardworking comedians that have been doing it for years that are finally getting the shit they deserve. Samuel Bade, Steph Tolov, Arolf Barbosa. Um, Cause they're almost like there used to be a thing where it's like, you could tell like after 10 years, a comic would get like late night or something like that, 10 to 15 years. And then, you know, 15 to 20 years, you start getting like half hour special or whatever. And maybe you already put out a couple albums like that's, there used to be like a way to to kind of uh, get to the next level, right? You do your late night spot, you put out an album, or you put out an album and then you put out your late night spot and then late night spot you promote your album and then after that you get your little half hour special like or whatever or you get or you get a or you get a a short set on like premium blend. I mean, I miss all that. I definitely got the best years of Comedy Central. I'm very lucky that I was a basically a teenager consuming the fuck out of premium blend and tough crowd with Colin Quinn and all these really great shows that they showed you all these great comedians. Again, that's why I think after midnight is the only show doing that right now, which is showing, um, a diverse array of comedians that I think people should know about. Again, I, 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 I hope that they, they, do, they get more diversity on those panels on after midnight. Cause some of them are pretty white. Ooh wee. I don't know how much longer I have, guys. But um Yeah, I think this is it. I'm I'm um I think this podcast episode is over. I um I appreciate all the feedback. Please keep sharing, please talk keep talking about it. 
Um, sorry, this wasn't, I don't think this was that entertaining, but I, I also, sometimes I'll do an episode and I'm like, this was the worst one. And then people will be like, this is my favorite. So I appreciate the feedback. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. Um, yeah, guys, have a good one. I'll see you next time. Peace.